In this video, we're going to be talking about the difference between a mutual fund and an ETF. We'll talk about the pros and cons of each, go on to explain what they are, and ultimately try to decide which is the better investment product for you. Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Brandon. We post a video every week, so make sure you subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. But in this video, we are gonna be bringing it back to the basics. I know we have a lot of beginners that tune in and maybe you're just searching for some information online on investment products, mutual funds, ETFs, trying to figure out what the hell these things are. That's basically what we're gonna to try to achieve through this video. Make sure you stick around to the end where I give my opinion on which is the better product. And by the way, these are exactly the type of topics we cover in our investing course. If you're interested in checking that out, it's that first link down in the description below. But jumping right ahead on into the video, we'll start here from the very basics and ask the question, what is a mutual fund or an ETF? And without a doubt, my favorite way to envision one of these products is to very simply think of it like a basket, all right? It's a basket of assets. And whether we're talking here a mutual fund or an ETF, one fund or one basket contain can contain a number of assets. And you'll come across funds that have 50 stocks inside. You'll come across funds that have hundreds of stocks, you'll come across funds that have thousands of investments all within one single basket or one single fund. And essentially what you'd be doing is you're buying units or shares of this basket. And you can picture there the major benefit right off the bat in getting a great level of diversification. You can go out and buy one fund and inherently be invested in thousands of different investments across all sorts of sectors, across all areas of the globe, all different sizes, all within one single fund. And we'll talk about fees in a second. You can do this for a very low cost, and we will touch on this a little bit later in the video, but that would really be the primary benefit there is getting a good level of diversification for a very low cost. So to clarify, if you're looking to go out and buy a mutual fund or an ETF, you're essentially trying to decide, well, what basket or what grouping of stocks or assets do I wanna buy, all right? You're not managing those investments, you're not doing any of the trading or whatnot. You're trying to say, listen, do I wanna go out and invest in gold? Well, maybe I'll go find a gold mutual fund or a gold ETF. Do I wanna go invest in Chinese stocks? Well, you can go find an Asian fund. There are literally thousands and thousands of funds to choose from. Your job as the investor is to line yourself up with the appropriate investment to suit or to fit or hit your investment goals. But let's start here with differentiating. We'll talk about the difference between a mutual fund and an ETF, because although they are very similar in the sense that they're both baskets of assets, they're actually quite different. And the best way to differentiate the two is to look at it in terms of active management and passive management. Those are two investment strategies that you'll hear when it comes to the investing scene, active and passive. And when we're talking about a mutual fund, mutual funds are what we would consider actively managed. And what that means is that every mutual fund that you go out and buy, each fund is going to have a portfolio manager or a fund manager, a professional managing this fund. And often you're gonna come across uh, actually teams. It's not always just one guy or one girl. It can be a couple people, it can be a team managing a specific mutual fund and their sole job is to actively manage that fund. They look at the investments on a day-to-day -day basis or a quarter by quarter basis, and they're constantly adjusting the fund, bumping up stocks, bumping down stocks, kicking them out of the fund in an effort to outperform the benchmark. All right. That's their goal. We're going to work on this fund and we're going to try and beat the benchmark. Now, an ETF, on the other hand, or an exchange traded fund, that's what ETF stands for. This is what we would consider a passive investment product. An ETF, all that it sets out to do is to mirror or to copy or replicate an index. And an index is very, very simply is just a grouping of stocks. If you never heard of an index before, you can look into some like the TSX, the Toronto Stock Exchange Index. That's basically a grouping of major Canadian companies. The S&P 500 index is another very popular index, which is basically the 500 largest companies in America is just basically 
a grouping of stocks. So if you had an ETF that was seeking to track the S&P 500, well, that fund would be a mirror image of the S&P 500 or the TSX. It's going to be exactly the same as the TSX index. So when investing in an ETF, you're essentially accepting the return of the market or you're accepting the return of the benchmark that this fund is tracking. So that's the difference between active management and passive management. A mutual fund, there's a fund manager that is out trying to beat the market or beat the benchmark, I should say, versus an ETF that sits back and simply seeks to track an index. And you're going to be okay with just receiving however that index or benchmark does. And let's just jump ahead here for the video into talking about fees with these two investment products, because it's very important to understand these. And when you want to invest in a mutual fund or an ETF, it does come at a cost, right? It's not free to go out and buy these packaged up diversified products. That'd be nice but they're not. And the reason being here is that you do have the option of going out and buying stocks directly. You can go and build your portfolio, go and buy uh, individual securities and try and build a diversified portfolio. But especially for new investors, people that are starting off with not a lot of money, that can be very tough to do. If you only have $100 or $1,000 to start, let's say, it's tough to build a, a very diversified portfolio because of trading costs or commissions. Like each time you go out, you have to go and buy, uh, or you have to pay a commission each time you buy a lot of stocks these days, take one like Amazon or a Google. If you want to go out and buy a stock like that, well, they're quite expensive to go out and buy a single share. So these managed products, these funds, they give you an option to get a good level of diversification for a very low cost. And the fee that you're going to be paying, to invest in these funds is what's called the MER, the management expense ratio. And this is very simply the annual fee or the cost that you're going to pay to invest into a certain product. Now, a very typical MER that you'd pay on a mutual fund is somewhere along the lines of 2.5%. I'd say two to 2.5%. You'll of course see some as high as 3%. You'll see some as low as one, 1 1.5. They do fluctuate, but I'd say the standard is right in that two to 2.5% range. Now, what this is telling us is that if you go invest a hundred dollars into a mutual fund that has a 2.5% MER, you're paying $2 and 50 cents in fees every year. Now that's taken off automatically. All right. You don't have to take out your credit card and pay a someone separately. You don't have to pay cash or anything like that. That's actually why a lot of people don't even think or know that they pay fees with their mutual funds at the bank. It's taken off automatically, but on the hundred dollars invested example, that'd be $2 and 50 cents in fees. And they do take that out. They split it by 12 and they take it off automatically month after month after month. Now let's contrast that over to an ETF, which is substantially cheaper in cost. And you'll come across ETFs with management fees of five basis points seven basis points. Heck, you'll even see some at four basis points, meaning for every hundred dollars you invest, you're paying four cents, five cents, six cents in fees per year. So a drastic, drastic difference there. And that's very simply because again, if we recap what we just talked about, an ETF simply tries to track an index. That's all it does. They just copy an index. Whereas a mutual fund, they have fund managers to pay. There's a lot more that goes into running a mutual fund, they got to do the research and all sorts of stuff versus just simply tracking an index, which is what the ETFs seek to do. So a drastic, drastic difference there. And that's why many people do lean. It's why ETFs have honestly become very, very popular. They're actually sucking a lot of money out of the mutual fund industry because people are really aiming for this low cost index or ETF investing strategies. Now in closing here to wrap things up, kind of in summary, and I'll share with you here, my overall thoughts on which is the better product for you. Hopefully by now you do have a nice understanding of the difference between the two mutual fund. Think actively managed ETF think passively managed. Let me first off start by saying there's, you're probably not wrong with going with either of them. There's they're both 
fantastic products for the right type of investor. And I know mutual funds definitely get a very bad rep. You always hear about hidden fees and your uh, financial advisors just making all this money from you because of those 2.5% fees versus the very low ones on an ETF. But what you need to ask yourself is what type of investor do you want to be? If you're somebody that wants to do it yourself, like you want to take the route of, let's say, if you're from Canada, let's say you want to open up a Quest Trade account, which is the broker that I use. By the way, I get that question a lot. If you open up a Quest Trade account and you want to actively manage your portfolio, you want to be a little more involved and decide what funds to buy, monitor your investments. Absolutely. I'd lean towards taking the route of ETFs because of that substantially lower fee. You're paying a lot less in fees. Now, if you're somebody that is busy with your daily life, you have a family, you're busy with work, and you could care less about like managing your own investments do it your, through a do-it-yourself brokerage, if you go to the bank, they're very likely gonna line you up with mutual funds. You'll get linked up with an advisor and he'll suggest a mutual fund or a number of mutual funds for you. There's nothing wrong with that either. They're both good products. And I did forget to mention this during the fee section, when you look at the returns online, so if you go out to any of these fund providers and you're looking up some funds to buy, the returns that you see are always net of fees. So if you look at a specific example, what you're seeing there already factors out the fee that you've paid. That's the real return that you're gonna be experiencing as the investor. So if you can find a mutual fund that still achieves a good return, despite the 2.5% fee, there's nothing wrong with that. I know people will say, well, the fee's so high, fee's so high. You could have a fund that has a high fee and you could have an ETF with a very low fee, but if this mutual fund's performing better, it would likely be the better option. So you can't look at it strictly in terms of fees. I don't know if that made a bunch of sense, but um, hopefully that did. It could go either way. And if you're looking to be a long-term investor and you're happy with receiving let's call it a seven to 8% re return over the long term, which is right in that range of what I expect to be quite reasonable. You can do that by finding mutual funds and you can do that by finding ETFs. So, you know, I don't really necessarily agree when everyone says a mutual fund is always the wrong choice. It just depends on the lifestyle or the investing style that you want. If you're wanting to be a little more involved, ETFs are great. If you want to go to the bank and find uh, a financial advisor, that's not a bad option either. Now, the statistics do show something like 80% of mutual funds fail to outperform the benchmark, okay? So in other words, what that's saying is that you're paying a 2.5% fee for somebody to manage this fund and for them to go out and make a bunch of trades and essentially beat the benchmark, yet 80% of the time, those fund managers fail to do that. Now, that does pose the question here, like, why don't you just take the route of passive investing, which again, is a very, very viable argument. And why if I did have to pick, I would lean towards ETFs, I just wouldn't discredit mutual funds. And really just, I'm probably rambling on here, but the reason for that, for the most part, is that it's quite difficult for a fund manager to outperform the market consistently year after year after year when they have that 2.5% fee to essentially dig themselves out of. Take for example, if in 2020, the benchmark was up 10% and this mutual fund was up 11%, so it technically beat it, it performed well, they made the right choices, it's up 11%, but once you factor in that 2.5% fee, well, guess what? The real return for the investor drops down to where they were better off just investing in the market. So it is a very valid argument that 80 to 90% of the time fund managers don't beat the index. Hence why we've been seeing such a large inflow into ETFs and into this low cost index investing route. But like I said, again, not to repeat myself, they're both good products at the end of the day for the right investor. So you have to decide what type of investment style you'd like to take. But if I had to give the edge to one, I would give the edge to the ETF. If you guys enjoyed today's video and learned something new, feel free to give this one a thumbs up or share it around with a friend that could benefit from this video. If you're not already subscribed, I post a video like this every week and uh, make sure you hit the bell for notifications. And like I said, 
Topics like this is exactly what we cover in our investing course. If you're looking to get a full understanding of the stock market, that's that first link down in the description below. Go put your name down, your phone number, and we can have a chat about some discounts, about what the course entails. But as always, I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.